What's going on everyone, Adam here from No Shell Space and today we're finally talking about my impressions of Disney Lorcana. Is it good? Is it bad? Should you invest in it even though it's insanely priced right now? Let's chat about it because I have lots to say as a big Disney fan. Okay, so Disney Lorcana is a trading card game from Ravensburger and Disney and it's brand new. It launched at Gen Con 2023. Then on August 18th, local game stores got some of the stock they were promised. And then on September 1st, coming up just shortly this week, uh, big box stores are going to get their stuff. And I've had the privilege of getting some stuff pre-ordered. Some stuff came in. I got a couple decks. Um, I should disclose one deck, one deck box, one set of cards did come from Ravensburger. They provided that to me. But the other two decks, I purchased those myself. I was also able to purchase the... And this might be upside down, but that's fine. The Maui mats and the Mickey play mats. Uh, and I, I picked up a couple other little things. Uh, I will say that Disney did provide me this Lorcana, or Ravensburger did provide me that Lorcana pin as well. But these are my own opinions. Uh, this is regardless of what was given to me by Ravensburger. There's a lot of hype around this game, and I think there right now a lot of it is based on a little bit of FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, there are local game stores who got early access to the game. Who are charging or who have charged it's come down just a little bit because of the pending uh big box store release on this first of september but there are a lot of local game stores really uh price gouging uh and that might not be the right word but it's the word i'm going to use uh price gouging customers taking um charging two three i've seen four times msrp on stuff uh i purchased at my local game store not mine town over local game store i purchased a starter deck and remember a starter deck comes with the starter deck 60 cards Plus a booster pack. I bought mine for $24.99, I think. So $25. I think the one I pre-ordered at GameStop Canada cost me like $22.99. So it was like a three, two or three dollar markup from my local game store. And I'm okay with that. These mats, I think I played I paid $26.99 for the mats. Uh, they were at GameStop for $24.99. So again, just a tiny little markup. But there were people in Canada selling booster or uh, starter decks for 45 or 50 dollars for a starter deck double double the price i've seen booster boxes from game stores for 500 dollars the msrp on that should be about 190 bucks uh again from the local game store next town over i bought a booster box cost me 204.99 i paid about a 15 dollar premium on top of what msrp would be for that many packs um, so right now there's a lot of hype around the game and I feel like that's doing great things for it because it's really elevating it and people are getting really excited about the game but at the same time it's also uh, turning a lot of people off and I hope that people who are being turned off by the price gouging come back and, and look at this with fresh eyes when, when you don't have to pay three four times the price to play it and um, there's a lot of discussion around who's to blame for all of this uh, is Ravensburger to blame is the local game stores to blame how come there's not enough product <clears throat> um excuse me did they not realize this was going to be so popular and i do think those are all valid questions now ravensburger giving local game stores early access i think was very brilliant of them because when it comes to stuff like brand new trading card games uh you really need your local game stores to energize the community to come out and play the game now a lot of these stores will have demo products on hand so people can just come in and try it for free uh, some of them did like a pay you had to pay twenty dollars to buy a box and then you could try it for free but you need your local game stores to really push a brand new product especially a trading card game like a board game you can get all this advertising online and stuff but a trading card game locally you really need just knowledgeable people who know about these things pushing the game so when ravensburger said hey we're going to give local game stores a two-week head start on selling product that made 100 percent sense to me and i thought well that's a brilliant move good on them for supporting the local game store um, and then we got into uh, issues. Gen Con was just a, a crapshoot with uh, trying to get product and then how much that product was going up for on, on eBay and local marketplace and stuff like that. Uh, and then the game store stuff happened and you saw you start seeing game stores who I think were given a privilege from Ravensburger to be able to sell the game so early, just gouging customers. And I think for a lot of them, it's gonna come back and bite them in the butt, it really is. Um, I've had a game store where collectively me and my family have spent hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on games in the last couple years alone uh, that all of us are kind of like, don't really want to support that store anymore. We're going to take our business to another 
popular game store. And you've heard me talk about this store a lot. I'm not going to talk about them now. But I think that um, it's unfortunate that a lot, and it, I would love to say it's just a few, but it's a lot. A lot of local game stores are, are, are pricing customers out of Disney Larkana and using stupid excuses to do it. Like, well, if we don't do it, someone else is going to do it. Or if we don't sell it for this much, someone's going to buy it and sell it for that much themselves. That's not the point. The point is you're the local game store and you're supposed to be promoting the product. So I think that's that's really set Lorcana off on a bad foot with a lot of people. And in fact, I was watching the Dice Tower and I love the Dice Tower and I love everybody at the Dice Tower. And uh, Camilla said, you know, she was kind of turned off of, of Lorcana because of the scalping, what's been happening with scalping and stuff like that. And I think it was Tom or Z said, you know, don't, that's, that has nothing to do with the game though. And that's what I want people to get past because once you get this stuff down on the table, it is so much fun. Listen, if you want to start playing a trading card game and you want to jump into Pokemon or Magic the Gathering, there's a lot to learn and figure out. Um, it seems like those are, right now, if you're brand new, you jump into Pokemon, you buy a starter deck, you're probably only using this starter deck. There are thousands of cards that you're going to try to, if you want to build a deck, like thousands and thousands of cards. Whereas if you're getting into Disney Lorcana on the ground floor, there's 204 different style cards. Now, yes, you have your Enchanted, but they do the same things as regular cards. And you have your Foils, but they also do the same thing as regular cards. So there's 204 cards that you need to think about and build a deck around. And that's so very manageable, especially when you're using the Disney Lorcana app. And I think the app is brilliant. Um, so this is great. If you're getting into or you want to get into a trading card game and you like Disney... This is amazing. Now, if you don't like Disney, I do feel like this is probably not going to be for you. I mean, it's still a trading card game. I suppose you could take all the characters out of it, take the storytelling out of it, and still have a great experience uh, playing the cards. But I think you need to be a Disney fan. You have to have some desire and enjoyment for Disney. And my father-in-law is not a big Disney fan, I would not say. Uh, but my brother-in-law and I are. And so he picked up the stuff and he's been enjoying the game as well. So I don't think you need to be a hardcore Disney fan, but I do think there's a little bit of knowing what everything is that makes it just a teeny bit more enjoyable. But I love the way the cards work. Now these starter decks are okay, but once you play with these, if you've played a trading card game before, you'll instantly start thinking about all the combinations you're gonna be able to make. And you are going to be able to make some sweet combinations. I mean, the Moana card that comes in the um, Amber Amethyst deck, I believe, uh, if you pair that up with a ton of princesses, wildly, wildly successful of a card. Uh, and then you've got other cards as well. The evasive characters are really interesting touch where only an evasive character can attack an evasive character. So if you can get an evasive character, especially Pongo, if you get Pongo out on the table early, like you're, you're doing so well. But as someone building a deck, you're like thinking through, how do I build my deck so that if someone plays Pongos, who can quest for two, who can quest for two of 20, um, if someone plays a Pongo or even two Pongos, what am I putting into my deck to combat that? Not necessarily Pongo, but like evasive characters as a whole. And that might be item cards that allow you to direct attack evasive characters, or that might be having evasive characters in your own deck. There's a lot to think about. I think a lot of people saw some of the early videos. Now, there were a couple uh, uh, YouTube groups, companies, I don't know what you call them anymore. Channels, there we go. There's a couple of YouTube channels who got early access to um, Ryan Miller, the designer of Lurkana, and they made some like pre how to play videos in their studios. And uh, honestly, it'd probably be in the best interest of Disney and uh, Ravensburger to take those videos down because I think they do a disservice to the game. The the learn to play with Ryan Miller, it does give you a nice overview of how you play Lorcana. You're gonna be inking cards and then you can play cards using ink and you can play as many cards as you have ink to play and then you move them into play and then they're not ready yet, they're still drying. And then the next turn you can put them at the top of your board. Now they're available to quest or to challenge. It gets all that down, but it, it really limits. I think those videos really don't show how much card variability there is how you can sync cards together and how you can play cards on top of cards and how you can you know manipulate your deck using specific cards and things like that like those videos don't touch on any of that and so when i saw those videos i was like oh this might be a collection experience for me not a gameplay experience and it's turned out to be the exact opposite we've always had very close games like 20 we played two people we played three people we played four people um what you can do i think it's best that too but if you want to play with three you can do it just always with the thought in your head that you always have to deal with the person to your left and then that person deals with the person to their left and then that person deals with you. That's the way it has to be. Otherwise, it turns into let's kind of 
kick someone while they're down, and then two people fight it out. It, it, but it works. It does work. You can play it with three players. I've done it. It's fun. And we've always had close games within three, two or three lore. Um, but it, it's just it's just a great experience. I think the cards are great. The card quality is awesome. The artwork is awesome. Uh, I think the way they, they made the cards is really good. Um, that one's not sleeved because I ran out of sleeves. I had 59 of a sleeve in my cupboard, and I need 60. But beautiful items. I love the the, the um, licenses they use, the movies they use. And there's going to be so much more coming from Disney Lorcana, and I just can't wait. Overall, I love Disney Lorcana. It's my go-to trading card game now. Um, my Pokemon stuff might as well you know, be on the next truck to the, to the thrift store because this is where it's at. And we're going to be collecting this for the time being. You're going to have a whole bunch more. I'm going to have a whole bunch more on the channel about Disney Larkana, so I hope you'll check that out. Uh, we're going to have some Let's Plays. We're going to be opening cards on the first, so be sure to check that out. Uh, but until next time, folks, thanks for watching, and we'll chat again real soon. Goodbye.